Hello there, everybody. Chief Editing Officer Gabby here. Uh, just uh, a quick FYI, the sound on this particular podcast is is it's weird. It's just kind of weird, kind of a little bit of crackle. Uh, I bought some new equipment that was supposed to improve the sound. It did not. We had issues. Then we thought we fixed it. It sounded better in our earphones, but listening to it back in editing, it, it was indeed not fixed. It's nothing horrendous, but again... Uh, duly noted and it may be this way for the next uh, we recorded three so i don't know i'll have to listen to those as i edit them but i have you know what i've reverted back to the old trusties old trusty mics and i'm forgetting all this new stuff sending it back going back to the old stuff so that's all thanks for bearing with us and enjoy the show you're listening to the board game snobs podcast a ridiculous podcast with ridiculous hosts that discuss ridiculous things. And any mention of board games is purely coincidental. And so, without further ado, and with a heavy dollop of shame and embarrassment on my part, I give you the Board Game Snobs. <laughs> Guys, welcome to the Board Game Style Podcast. This is Jerry. And this we're is Gabby. Doing the intro again. This is Enrique. Boy, my headphones are sounding weird again. What is with this? Is there something uh-huh. wrong with my microphone? No, it's not the microphone. I think sure? it's the setup. This setup is odd. This is Jerry. Did I, you, I said this is Gabby earlier. Enrique. Yeah, like, oh, sorry. Everybody's introduced. Yeah, yes, yes, Good you, for you. What? Yes. How about that? So this is the intro. Thank God we've shot this like eight times so that we could get the intro with what Gobby describes as quote unquote more energy. Why are you always so condescending? Because I I descend. I look down. You look I, down upon me as always. I condescend to you. Why? Let's just do like the radio show host doing. Just do that fake voice the entire episode. Oh, that's terrible. Yes. No. Do you have a radio voice? I don't have no voice. Welcome, everybody. To the, yeah. I don't like that these earphones are bad. Like, <laughs> it's distracting me. All these earphones are bad. Okay, pause. No, wait, no. No. Okay, pause. And go. What? what Again. Again. Yeah, we fixed the Sorry. headphones. Sorry. There's, I sound yeah, so we, much better. Ah, uh, this yeah, feels so much better. Our technical right. issue I can't on hardly hear side. myself. Can you adjust? Well, I, I, I need to hear myself. I need to hear my voice mainly and only. You Keep it up a little bit more. That's better. Yes. I can't hardly hear Enrique, but that's his microphone. So. Yeah, I think I just, I'm not close enough. That's okay. Go. Why be so meta? Why be so meta well, about you this? Know, why are you, why? Because we should have this stuff fixed on the fly instead of doing it. It's called practice, but you know. No, no. As soon as you took over the sound again, it all went downhill. Notice the last several episodes no, have been no, flawless. No. <laughs> Flawless. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, Either way, it's good to be back. I appreciate everybody who's a Patreon member. Those of you who are not Patreon members, that's just fine. Do your thing. Keep your money. Keep your secrets. Well, uh, we, we would really appreciate it if you could subscribe so we can take your money and get better equipment. Or... We're going to be releasing a Patreon. Well, it's going to be temporarily Patreon only. Enrique and I are going on a trip tomorrow. Oh, yeah. We're going to Monster Jam. And I have this idea that we're on our long drive down. What about Monster Jelly? Look, that's the one thing I'm not going to miss. Call back. It's your dumb jokes about (laughs) about juices and jellies. Jellies and and jams. That's my jam. On our way, Uh, we're going to record in the car. Be sure and preserve that podcast. We will. I'm going to try to hijack the monster truck. Honey, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Yeah, precisely. That's why we're going to test and see if I'll succeed. I probably won't. I'll probably get tackled down, beat up, and then just thrown out of the stadium. 
Marma laid me some good sandwiches the other day. No, stop it. <laughs> so we're going far. on a trip to down to the AT&T Stadium in Dallas, in Arlington, to be more exact, and watch Monster That seems like something that should take place in, like, Cricket Stadium for some reason. Monster Jam? No. Yeah. Hmm. The, Just talking about the lower tier class of people that attend Monster Jam. Whoa. Oh my lord! I mean, Enrique's shirtless shirts will fit in perfectly. Have there. you ever been wow. to Monster Jam? Once, many, many years you ago. Uncultured you, swine. You are uncultured, <laughs> undiscerning swine. Number one, my child Jack. <laughs> oh, that's right. Loves it, and he loves going. So that's why I have to take him. And all the other hills. Well, Jack's a child. That makes sense. It's he cool. likes big trucks. It's cool. And he uh, cannot lie. It, it's just, it's a phenomenal experience. It is. Ricky's been before. Like, it was my first time going over at uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. City. Yes. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. So thoroughly. you have large trucks that hit jumps and crush cars. Well, it's right. not just that. It's also, these trucks are really loud. <laughs> so, like, you just feel feel them just moving you'll be like the base hun- like just a cup couple or a few feet away and you feel the vibration feel in, in that body. scene and i'm shocked that as a ex-truck driver yourself uh that you're ragging on these vehicles i'm not a i'm not a car guy like big engines monster trucks even a fancy 18 wheelers they don't impress me they don't impress me much uh this wayfarers which is again a continuation of the various other titles made by Mr. Phillips, such as what's the ones that you enjoyed? Uh, the ones I enjoyed were Raiders of the North Sea and then Raiders of Scythia. This, and presently, this counts. None of the above. You don't like any of them? I've played North Sea and Scythia t- kind of to death. They're not, you know, they're just, they're not that, not a whole lot of variety to them. I enjoyed them the first 10 plays. Uh, Viscounts. We played one time, didn't care for. I say I'm going to play it again because I still have it. Architects we didn't like. Let's see. What others? I said that Architects, I think, was his best in terms of innovation. Well, it had that multiplier effect yeah. whenever you put the workers yeah. out there. Now, with Wayfarers of the, I don't know, that was innovative. Of the South Tickerous, this is one where very similar to like most of his games where you're buying cards that are people that help you give special powers, kind of like in, in uh, Raiders where each individual crew member helps you, gives you another special power. You kind of have your little convoy, and so you're exploring the land and building out different cards, like some to pick, like go, you're going rafting down the Tigris, and the other ones that you're on land, and you're building them out to the left or right of your little personal board, using dice to select your actions and moving up on tracks. To me... And I rambled several times during the game about how I did not like the iconology of the game. Ography. Whatever. It's different meanings. What are the meanings? (sighs) Oh, no, no, without your phone, please. Oh, yeah, because you don't look up definitions all the time. I don't. I don't. Well, that's why you get things wrong all the time. No, but at least they're my opinion. Iconology is the study of visual imagery and its symbolism and interpretation. Mm -hmm. Iconography, the visual images and symbols used in work of art or the study or interpretation of these. It's the same thing. (laughs) Well, Ryan Maxwell, who claims to be a big wordsmith, is the one that gets so upset every time you say iconology. Why are you hating on Ryan? His calves. I'm envious. Yeah. Those glorious calves. You didn't even see them. I did not. But you described them in great detail as if I was there. Yes. Then you like made a 3D graphic of them on the computer. And you're like, here it is. Like Michelangelo's David. <laughs> you were just drawn away. These like, are the calves grief. of a Greek warrior. <laughs> An Adonis. Okay, so this is our first episode. This is the rusty one. It's just not, saying. Why are you saying? Why are you getting rusty. so meaty? It's very rusty. Why are you being Did you meaty? Say yeah. Why are you getting so meaty? meaty? Why are you getting so meaty, <laughs> meaty? Why are you always? It's just so. It's not rusty. I just can tell. I can tell we're we're having a hard time jiving. I'm, I can. I'm I feel jived. it. It's the first I feel podcast. It. I know. We are always rusty. No. You feel it though, right? You no, feel it. I jive. You jive, sucker. <laughs> I'm over here. I'm all jiving. That's because in your head you're always great. I, 
I can't help it. I can't help it. It can be it, useful sometimes. I mean, it is fantastic for self confidence. Yeah, I can't. I don't. Something I don't have. I don't so. understand why y'all don't have. Well, I do understand why you don't have self confidence. <laughs> See, I'll be like, why? I, don't I you, wonder why we don't. Why don't you develop As some? How do I do that? Like you do your calves, you just stretch and you focus on it. And before you know it, you just tell yourself, I'm good enough and I'm smart enough and doggone it, Ryan Maxwell likes me. That's what I do. I'm going to look that up. You know, I'm going to Google. <laughs> How to build self-confidence. How to build. You know, I don't need you. I've just got Google. Hey, build we, self-confidence. So, for instance, I've been building up Enrique's self-confidence here lately. Building. Hey, do you mind I'm talking here for a second? Yeah. I, uh, Enrique, listen. You can what? look up your stuff. Look up your stuff. Just, just, just do it in You're quiet. You're so rude. I'm not, I, You're so rude. You're right. All Maybe you we're do. not jiving. <laughs> <laughs> All you do. Oh, my God. I think the last three or four podcasts, literally your main line is, You're interrupting me. You're interrupting me. Yeah, but, like, but that's like his catchphrase. It's hysterical. Maybe you should stop I'm interrupting me. I'm holding Enrique's hand. You know why? Because I've been building his self-confidence. Okay, go yeah. ahead. Because I don't need your permission. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Go. God, you don't tell me what to do. You don't tell me what to do. Uh, it's because Enrique looks. We've discovered that Enrique looks a lot like Pedro Pascal <laughs> in a weird way, in a very equate brand Pedro Pascal way, and it's disturbing. Why'd you turn my headphones off? I can't hear what I'm saying because I need to hear my. Tell me when you're so good. that's very nice. Very okay. nice. So that helps Enrique out because Enrique here, he's recently, you've gone dancing. I I have done dancing a little bit, yeah. A little bit? A little bit. Yeah, okay. So what do you mean, yeah, okay? You went dancing. What yeah. was that dance you were doing? No, it's the like. The Spanish like turbo hustle, basically. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. The Spanish I don't turbo know most hustle. Of the songs yeah. there. I just it's like lots of kicking and jack. <laughs> it's like the. <laughs> it's a song. For it. Remember when they make That's shows? Awesome. Remember when they make shows and they do them in different countries and they just do di- the same storyline but with a different name and different actors? Spanish turbo hustle sounds like Fast and the Furious stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Spanish turbo hustle. Okay, oh, so Lord. Building, building a state, Enrique is a state. Chief editing officer Gabby here. The song I was thinking of is called El Sonadito. Just uh, in case you want to reference it, that's what I was thinking of. That's it's it's very fast. And now back to the show. Oh yeah, I was just dancing, just mainly. Yeah, you were dancing a lot. You it was were doing like, good. It was a couple of songs. And thus, his confidence has improved. And why did your self confidence improve? Because no. you were with me, <laughs> and I encourage you to do things that you didn't normally do. That's why I'm a great friend. Tell the listeners. Tell the listeners. <laughs> All right, all right. He's okay. Okay. He's okay. Gabby, have you discovered, Googled yet how to build your confidence up? Oh, I did, actually. So here's Well, you here's got what one says. thing right, at least. Go ahead. You're hurting his confidence. You no, can't I'm, be doing that. I'm building it up through resistance. Make two lists. One of your strengths, one of your achievements. Okay, let's do that right now. Give me a pen. Try to get a supportive friend or relative to help you with these lists, as people with low mood are not usually the most objective frame of mind. Keep the list in a safe place. So one of my strengths and one of my achievements. Okay, what are your strengths? (laughs) I'll write them down. This is what's going to make me even more depressed. No, 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 no. We got this. We're trying to build your confidence up. What is your strength? You tell me. I should tell you? Yes, because I don't know. No, that's not true. I don't. What are what are my strengths? I'm no. You, you have to look inward. What are your strengths? I'm going to type this out. Gobby strengths. <sighs> what are the things that you like about yourself? Nothing. That's the low self confidence. No, that's this is not nothing. true. No, I don't believe that. You're just saying that because you're just telling yourself. I'm that. not trying to be falsely modest. You're being. That I don't like myself. I've said that. I hate myself. <sighs> that can't be true. It is. I don't like myself. What are your strengths? I got number one. I can chat up a. St- I can when necessary. Chatting. I can. I can. Ch- I can. Ch- 
this is a sad list. No, it's not. This is number one. You're good at chatting. I'm the best truck driver and driver I know. Gabby, you know that's not what we meant. I am the best driver. It's a streak. That is Write true. Write it down. That is true. Okay. That is true. I'm trying to think of somebody else who I would think in terms of driving. No. Yeah. See, okay, you're driving. trying to think of ways to take me down. No, 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 I was no, thinking. No, no. no, I was seeing this. You movie. can strive to be better. We're, we're thinking of my strengths and achievements, yeah, so not ways to improve at the moment. Well, if you, yeah, Enrique, if you compare God. Your strengths, if you compare your my strengths worst enemy with, over some, there with someone three greater, you could str- try to strive to be as strong. That's not as what we're doing right now. My strengths and achievements. Okay. So, so far we have chatting and driving. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what else? What else? Uh... uh See, this is why you're friendly. You are friendly. Putting that down. Gregarious. I wouldn't say gregarious. You have said gregarious. I know, but I lie a lot. What does it even mean? Gregarious. It means like you're just with people. You enjoy being around people. People. No, I don't. But friendly. Oh, I'm gregarious when I need to be. He he brings a a good mood to the table whenever he's around people. As long as he's How not dare yeah. you. As long as, as long he doesn't. As Jerry's not there beating me down. Yeah, I'm no, 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 no. When he does it, you're even better at it. That's but, true. So there you go. That's true. No, no, don't. Now you're building up Jerry. <laughs> I bring out the best in you. No, no. Jerry brings out the best. <laughs> my strength is my call. My achievement, Jerry. Jerry. Okay. So chatting, driving, and friendly. That's all we got so far. I, I, like, what does that involve? Like, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. Achievements? You, is, is, you what's got an married. achievement? That's not an achievement. What is? What'd you say? I got married. That is tr- that is a that is an achievement. Now, who I married, that's an achievement. Okay, so Gina's, you're married. Gina's, Gina's married. But that's not really a Gina's strength. A, it's, a, well, it's strengths and achievements. Okay, achievement. I'll put that on our subheading. Achievements. Go ahead. Achievements. Marriage? But see, to me, that's not an achievement. How is it not an married achievement? Married above. I guess I'm married above my very great. I was going to say, like, I swear. If you... Oh, what? Are you going to talk about my wife? How dare you? I'm just saying. It's like, how can you not say marriage is an achievement? You've married someone that you deeply love. Some people get married that should not get married, and then they produce children that should not be produced, well, and then that's they're just they're dumb. just a burden on society from there on out. Good lord, Gabby. I'm not gonna lie, I really thought we was Have you seen Idiocracy? Part? <laughs> Man. That's it's going right. hard. Um okay. So yeah, there we go. So you We haven't even got to number two. No, we did chatting, driving, friendly, achievement, <laughs> does it? So what else? I have a game room. Does that count? I don't know. <laughs> or do, that's not that's, that's, that's more like so a you, personal achievement. I can are. edit. You're a good editor. I'm a good editor. It's an achievement. Put edit. A, I, I can put in some real zingers every now and then. Tour. That's the best. Okay, so that's all you think. That's all I'm going to do for now. Think positively about yourself. Remind yourself that despite your problems, you are a unique, special, and valuable person that you deserve to feel good about yourself. You are, after all, a miracle of consciousness. The consciousness of the universe. Oh, my God. A miracle of consciousness. A miracle of consciousness. (laughs) What does that even mean? Don't think you're that conscious. This is from Psychology Today. (laughs) Oh, God. Number three, pay special attention to your personal hygiene. I do that. I take you, a shower every you, day. Yeah. You smell. I'm writing this down. You smell good. <laughs> you use cologne, and you often smell very good. I don't know what what cologne do you use. For the listeners would want to know. Eve Saint Laurent. Eve Saint Laurent. Yeah. It's Y V E S. It's like a French thing. Eve Saint Laurent. Ives Saint Laurent. Ives Saint Laurent. It's Eve's or Ives. I don't know. Okay. Number three, so yeah, take a shower, brush your hair, trim your nails, and so on. Okay. I have no hair to brush. My nails are trimmed, and I take showers. So there we go. I do always feel better after I take a shower. Do you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like because what? it's just refreshing. I do cold showers. It's refreshing. So it dumps dopamine onto my body. Here's my thing with cold showers. I would do a cold bath because that's more constant. Mm. But when you have like your body, your body's constant. Like you can't get adjusted to it in a shower. You want the uncomfortable. That's the whole. But all the things I see on YouTube, they're jumping into baths and pools and. Well, lakes. no, no, no. It, like that's and also I heard somebody get, had a heart attack the other day when they tried that. 
I think that's not going to happen to me. Just got to do it correctly. You got to be in good shape. No, you don't. Mm. All right. Wear clean clothes that make you feel good about yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay. Eat good food as part of a healthy balance. Now, okay, now there, mm-hmm. I'm not doing that. There you go. Exercise yeah, regularly? Good. Not doing that. Ensure you're getting enough sleep? Not doing that. What? Reduce your stress levels. I've tried to do that in my life. Like you could exercise. That reduces it. Enrique, you're missing the point here. I'm, I'm like, just you're saying. going through all these things of things I could do. I could exercise. You're right. And I, I, I'm planning on, <laughs> as all fat people are, planning on doing it start Monday. I'm going to eat right and exercise. If, if you can get into it. That's that, when you start your new job. That's when I start my new job. New you. I'm sure that won't be stressing. It's not stressing. And you're just answering the phone. How hard could it be? Make your living space clean, comfortable, and attractive. My wife takes care of that for me in a very fine way. I took care. Actually, I, I washed uh, the dishes today before y'all got here. I swept the floor, took out the trash. I like a clean home. Yeah. I like, yeah. I'm a good housekeeper. I wouldn't say you're good. but you, I'm a sufficient housekeeper. You are sufficient. Do more of the things that you enjoy. I think you're I doing in, them now. I'm about so. to say, I think I indulge in that enough. I think yeah, there you go. Get artistic. Here we you, go. Now, I now now stop right there because okay. I have comments about this. I have told you numerous times because you don't remember anything I say that you are a creative person in certain regards and that you should engage in creative and artistic activities more often. Such as such as anything that has to do with like with not just the editing. But often, like, like I even even before when we were talking about like jobs in connection with like social media stuff, anything like that, like content creations, you're very good at writing and coming up with stuff. You're very good at at, at like being able to look and determine all this. You, you might not come up with something particularly original on your own, but you're good at looking at something and going, "All oh, this should be this. It That's should be true. like this." Like, like like you can pick something apart. That's true. Very easily and go, "This is what it should be." And so that type that. Like, Whenever my wife is fixing to send like a text, she has me look it over. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, you need to reword this right here. Right. I'm very like conscious of wording. Not on this podcast. No. But no. when it needs to be done. You'd think your vocabulary would be better. No, my vocabulary is not. I've been working on it, but oh. I forget. I have that app that like gives you a word a day. Mm-hmm. I forget them all. It's hard to remember. Dub squatch light. <laughs> How dare you use that knowledge? I just made that up. I don't know what a Sasquatch has to do with anything. Mm, I don't know. That's set yourself a challenge that you can realistically complete. Do you have any challenges? I'm losing weight, but realistically, <laughs> come on. No, man. I mean like like re- when losing weight is, is is vague. For example, take up yoga, learn to sing, or throw a dinner party for some friends. You just can, go for it. You can sing. I'm putting that down. I like to sing. I don't know that I, I can think you sing. can sing. You need to sing for that. I like her, I like her much. Yeah, I think you, we had somebody send in an email where they sang. <sighs> we did. And it was entitled The Singing Snobadillo. I have no idea who it was. I meant to play that, but I don't have it ready. Well, here's what you do. It, end this podcast with them singing. Okay. Insert here. Oh, end it with them end singing. It, yeah, okay, yeah. Don't I insert it here. That'd be, been, that'd be weird. Okay, here we go. We only got five more left. Do some of the things that you've been putting off, such as fill it, filing the paperwork, repainting the kitchen, or clearing out the garden. You don't put off anything. I'm not putting out. And there's not, not really a Your life is very one. simple. I try to keep it simple, yes. Be nice to people. Do nice things for them. Now, you're nice to people. I don't think if you do nice things for people, though, there's different. It, it, it's more like the indulgence of doing nice things yeah. for people. Yeah, being nice to somebody is just interacting with them. But being nice and like being thoughtful about it, that's like actually going out of your way for somebody. Yeah. I it, do that all the time. Like it'll, it'll feel good <laughs> at a point, but if you keep indulging into it, then you just yeah. kind of forget Strike about it. Strike up a conversation with a postman or shopkeeper. Invite a neighbor around for tea. I'm not going to engage these strangers in this way. No. You should, though. Visit a friend who is sick. I do that. Get involved with a local charity. Put a smile on someone's face is bound to put one on yours. There you go. That's you. Okay. Getting others on board. What does that even mean? That just means you get other people involved. Tell your friends and relatives what you're going through and ask for their advice. Oh, that's what I'm doing right now. Duh, I'm, check. Well, no, you're not listening to my advice. <laughs> <laughs> Two more. Spend more time with those you hold near and dear. Check. You're with them every day. I do that all the time. That's us. Last one. Avoid people in places that treat you badly Mm -hmm. and make you feel bad about yourself. Well, look at you, Jerry. I don't make you 
you feel bad about yourself? And you he, do. He, how, do I make, how do I make you feel bad about yourself? <laughs> Just rewind this podcast. What did I say? Well, I think that you just project. No. See, now you're putting I, I, it off on me. No, I'm just saying you project all your negative emotions inward and just trying to make me. He's got like a mixture guy. of both. And you I try to encourage you to be the best you ever. Have I not motivated you? Hmm. Have you I not it. brought up? Have I not been th- at the forefront of change? <laughs> Like you yell at him a lot too. All the Thank time. you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Does yelling make you feel bad? <laughs> no. Yes. Well, good. Yeah. It strengthens you, builds you up, fortifies you for what needs well, so to be there done. There you go. There's your ways to increase your so self confidence. So we've got chatting, driving, friendly. You married well. You're a good editor. You smell good, and you can sing. <laughs> see. So see, that's yeah. that's a solid you know list. I am a great guy. Enrique, what are good things about you? Uh, we're not going to discuss that right now. You're a good video gamer. Eh. Yeah, what about you? You kind of look like Pedro. <laughs> kind, kind of. Kind of like. I it's, think they're like long lost twins. It's scary. I guess like if I'm really wanting to do something, I'll I'll be obsessed about it and actually try to. Okay, so like what? Really, so no what have you been control? obsessed about? <laughs> <laughs> you, bowling? Yeah, bowling. He is a, he's a decent uh, bowler. Have you, you, you've gotten obsessed about it? Yeah. Yes, yes, he has. If, if, if I could stay... In a bowling alley for like a day, Live I would. It. You know you can. You're not married, <laughs> and you could do that if you only would get your driver's Marriage license. Marriage is not one of your unlocked achievements. Yeah, though that is still like a couple partner years found. Away. <laughs> uh, so see. bowling, bowling, no okay. self control. Yeah, no, yeah, no self control. If I'm actually just obsessed, you with eat it. very little. Yeah, I do eat very little. I'm actually good at saving money. You, you that's, are that's good at true. saving money. That's true. Good, good at saving money. Uh, How much money do you have saved currently? <laughs> although you're, although you're prone to being scammed. Yeah. <laughs> How many princes yeah. in Nigeria have you supported? None. Okay, I don't, that's good. I don't even look at my emails. Okay. Do you have an email? Yeah, I have like a couple, yeah. <laughs> For? What do you got a couple emails? What are you, what are you doing? I just have them just kind of stored away for just the You got to have an email for uh, PlayStation, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. PlayStation, that's a good one. You're not one of those Xbox junkies. <laughs> PlayStation, put that down. Uh, let's see. Let's see. If we're talking about strengths. Um... Is strength one of your strengths? Are you strong? Eh. Enrique is strangely stout. I don't want to say strong. Yeah, I'm not strong. Many t- I can take a hit pretty good. Yes. Let me I try have, that out. I have seen him. Uh, seen like a punch stuff, to the face? No, I've seen stuff like sh- strike him by accident. Like things fall on him and literally think he's dead. <laughs> and then he just gets up. Like what? Like, like he just, I'm like, fine. Like Johnny Knoxville. I'm durable. Let's level, say that. Durable. Durable. Durability. All right. Well, I think that's enough of that. Uh, yeah. Well, I didn't get to mine, but everybody knows my strengths. Uh, <laughs> so, Wayfarers of the South Tigris. <laughs> Wayfarers of the South Tigris. It's okay. I it's. I don't tell, like, tell them about the other game that's better, that's the same thing, but more streamlined, that we liked from BGG Con 20, whatever. Okay, so it wasn't from BGG Con. It was a game that I purchased called Santa Maria. <laughs> oh, and, and I was thinking of the other one where we go across that track and you had to choose the forks in the road. Oh, 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 you're right. Yeah, that was... Mankind? That, that was, uh, yeah. Uh, it was by, actually, was it Stronghold? It might not have been Stronghold. I'll have to look it up. But the mechanic in this game w- with Wayfarers is this rolling the dice, then using these dice to activate the various powers on this little grid. And so what was interesting about that is that it does allow you to... Uh, sort of kind of modify this grid so that now you've got multiple actions to choose with this dice. It was interesting enough. Uh, but one thing that I didn't like about it was that sometimes... Pizza. Uh, you were really restricted by exactly what was your... Dawn of Mankind, 2019 game is what, you're, what you were thinking of. Mm-hmm. Dawn of Mankind, it was a, a TMG RIP mm. uh, game that was uh, it's put out. It was a very light game that we actually really enjoyed, and it's very similar to this Wayfarers, where you're f- just going along this track, selecting kind of the go left or right type thing, moving your person down the ro- the the journaling is what they call it in Wayfarers, but in in uh, Dawn of Mankind, it's actually the history of your people, uh, and it was actually just 
I don't know. And and, and to wayfarers, it's like you're journaling, and you to progress down the road, you have to meet criteria. And that is gather a certain amount of cards, certain amount of upgrade tiles, money, whatever. Right. And so you're just going down the road trying to get to the end. And it, it just, I don't know, Wayfarers just kind of fell flat for me. I'll go on about the iconography or iconography or whatever you call it. I did not like it, which is always a big issue for me. The artwork, again, with all of Shem Phillips stuff is always amazing. They always do an excellent job. The game is very functional. If you're a fan of any of his other previous works, you're going to be a fan of this. You're going to love it. So if you like anything else that Shem Phillips and Garfield Games has done, uh, to me... And I will, and I'm, I will give this game a compliment. Out of all the other Garfield games that I've played, I'm not, not, not Sarkadian's First Light. That's my favorite. By That's far. McDonald. That's McDonald's, but the same company. Uh, out of all the other kind of games of that line, I think Wayfarers is my favorite out of his. Really, I do. I think it is my favorite, even though I there's a lot that I did not like about it. I still think it was my favorite, so I certainly did enjoy it. That dice placement grid thing reminded me of Santa Maria, mm -hmm. the game that was very popular there for a while about colonization, and it was way too bright and colorful. That no, it's out of, surely out of print. But the game that I would that's much lighter than this in Wayfarers, it has that same little track mechanism that Dawn of Mankind came out in 2019 by DMG. The same guy who did Historia, which is a very popular game. He's the same designer, and he also designed um, Upon a Salty Sea, which is a, another old game that was actually one that I... The forgot. Dead Sea is very salty. Uh, Marco Pranzo is his name. The saltiest of seas. In the Black Sea? It's like real sassy. In the Black Sea? The saltiest? Like you I thought it was the... Is the Black Sea and the Dead Sea the same thing? No, no. You're no. The Dead I'm, sea. I'm thinking, I'm sorry, you're you're correct there. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah, Dead Sea. One for Because it floats. You float naturally yeah. in it. So even even you would float. Are, are you there very buoyant? See, there you go. Are you there very buoyant? I'm super buoyant. Well, most people like that. Fat is more buoyant than muscle. That doesn't mean anything. It is, though. No, it, it doesn't. Does. It doesn't? Yes, because muscle is dense. Well, you're dense. Fat has more air. <laughs> Yes, you did. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Why do you set me up for these shots? Nose dives. <laughs> okay. Well, speaking of things, we do need to bring something else up that's been on my mind because it's very mm. serious. So you need to stop laughing because both of y'all laugh at inappropriate times. But we lost a dear friend of the show, our first ever listener, I would say, recently to cancer, which is Giuseppe. Love Giuseppe. Giuseppe was also on our show. I forget what episode it was. It was like one... I just looked it up the other day. I think it's around the 140, something like that. Right. I think Giuseppe was like the first listener I think we ever got an email from. Or the first uh, no, person we, we, ever we discussed this uh, uh, previously. He was in the top three. Yeah. Uh, Captain w Croc was the number one because he wanted the, the game that we sold. And but then Giuseppe like emailed like immediately thereafter. Right. Well, we don't know what happened to Captain Croc. Forget but we Captain Croc. Forget Captain Unless he's still Croc. listening. No, then, and, then hello. And then he needs we anyway. appreciate your loyalty. <laughs> but but <laughs> Giuseppe Giuseppe was really Giuseppe the one was in our fantastic. mind. That was our first one. And we love Giuseppe. We Giuseppe even, was consistent. He emailed us threat constantly. Constantly. He was the board game diner on board Instagram. Board game diner on Instagram. His wife, Summer, has just posted that he passed away as of this recording about two weeks ago uh, to cancer. And it's very. It made me very sad because it's strange that you know I didn't know him IRL in real life. That's what that means. But yes. I knew him from the podcast, from the emails, and his Instagram, and I, it, it made me have this whole like thing with social media. Mm -hmm. Like I crap on social media a lot. I hate social media, even though it's like for podcasting, it's almost a necessity to say, hey, here we are. And most people use social media to, you know, brag and show their lives and blah, blah, blah. But you do meet people on social media. You get to, you feel like you interact with them. Like I saw Summer and Giuseppe when they would post their games and when they lived in Las Vegas and then they moved and then all this other stuff. But then I did see when they, he got sick and. He was kind of, he was chronicling all that. And then we had him on the show and he was just, you could just tell he was a, a genuinely nice, 
guy and it's sad that we lost him right and i think well that's the point of social media though i mean that's the proper use of it is, I is that it's not something that you're using just the just the just to show off just to post it, random things it's about connecting with people it's about being able to have like, like well like facebook it's your friends but yet yeah, Everybody friends everybody on Facebook. You have like 8,000 people that you friended, but nobody that you actually talk to. It's like it's meant to be able to keep track of somebody. Same thing with Instagram. It's like watching <laughs> the videos and the pictures and things that people put on there about their lives. And, and it's something that's a quick and easy way for people that you don't see every day to be able to see what they're up to. And it is true that I absolutely hate social media. I'm the worst of it. I go in spurts where I'll use it and be a part of a group for a while. And it's like, I don't want to mess with it. But Giuseppe was really the the exception to that rule for us in connection with that, because he was the first person like that made contact with us really through the podcast. And then we had him on the show and we were always, you know, instant messaging him back and forth and just talking with him and especially the deal with cancer. So it was very sad uh, that he passed away there just a few weeks ago from this episode. But, yeah, it's it it really shows how. You can connect with somebody even though you've never laid eyes on him, which is kind of odd. Like it is. Like it's odd that you feel bad and are affected by somebody that really you don't know. You never. You don't. You don't know at all. Like you have you a just, perception you, yeah. of what they are, right? And and, but, and that's what so because generally social media is a facade. People just present themselves as they want to be presented. Well, I think you can tell though. Like you can watch like all these fake prank yeah. videos on YouTube. Oh and, God. oh God! And people that just put stuff on 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 social media, but you can tell when somebody's genuine. To I agree. believe so. Like you get a sense of it, or sometimes you can. At least you get to it. When I say genuine, of course, there's always things that that anytime you you observe something, you change it. So anytime somebody's putting something on social media, it is to some degree manufactured. <clears throat> But at the same time, you do get a sense of that person, I think. Well, I'll tell you this. There's a few people that we have made friends with just completely on the Internet. And Dan, Mike, Richard, Ben, uh, the people in our Facebook group. We have several, several. I'm not going to mention names because then there'll be people I'll leave out. But we have several people in our Facebook group that we communicate with regularly. And when I heard Giuseppe had passed away, I cried. And I'm like, I never met this guy. But you're very, you're very uh, emotional. And plus, we had him on the show, so it's like I'm about to cry right now. <laughs> it's sad. It is sad. It does. I'm yeah. like, I don't even know this guy. <laughs> <laughs> my God, I feel like I'm with my mom all over again. But yeah, you know, it's like you don't know this guy. But you feel bad for him. Of course you do. I mean, it's because it's somebody that you that that affected us in a way. Because, like I said, he was our first, like one of our first listeners, and was somebody that. He, you know, we reached out to him and had him on the show and we had him talk about his story. And it just you kind of connect with people. And I think that's the, the 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 purpose of having anything that involves around social media or board games or podcasting is it is to connect with people. And I think in terms of Giuseppe, I think we were successful in that. Like we were there and talking with him this as distant internet friends, I guess you could say. Yeah. And so it just makes sense that in his passing, it affected us in that same way. And, and of course, it's something reaching out to his wife, Summer, about, how, you know, our condolences with her. But, yeah, it was such a it's it, it, even though it's a sad experience when you lose somebody like that, who is obviously very young and, you know, a, a very interesting and lively person. At the same time, it just goes to remind you just how. How quickly life can end and how you should always take stock of what's important in your life and do the best that you can to really value what you have. And I think that's what's important, especially in times like these. And and that's one thing with Giuseppe. I know we, we like to have fun here. We like to enjoy, you know, the lighter things in life. But at the same time, uh, you just got to do what you can to be as nice as you can to the people that or a part of your life because you just don't know when you are going to lose them. So with that in mind, we do appreciate all of our listeners and, and people here and, uh, Enrique, I'm going to, mm. what, what you're useless. What? You said my name. Uh, okay. We're, we're going to close. And so I'll sign off for Gobby. So that was Gobby. This is Jerry. This is 